Hey everybody, it's Peter Bowden. Um, thank you for joining me in the first live chat in our UU Planet community group. Um, I just want to make sure that this stream is coming through. Can you, if you see this stream and can hear me, give me a thumbs up or a little chat just so I know that you can join in. All right, so while people are joining in, um, and once you come on, share in a comment where you're watching from, okay? I'm in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where it is very hot, so I just turned off the AC so you can hear me clearly. Uh, and um, so if I get a little sweaty, it's because it's so hot! We can talk climate justice in our congregations later. So we are going to um, welcome Jen. We're gonna talk guest services and I just want to go through some of the things that in my work with our congregations, helping Unitarian Universalists lead and grow amazing congregations, some of the things that come up again and again as important uh, things that we need to do to make sure first time visitors to our congregations have a great experience. Uh, and some of the areas that I see when I'm visiting congregations, some of the pitfalls and places where we're not doing so well. So first, um, thank you for being here because having this community is a way, as I do more and more digital training, online courses, group coaching, uh, just to extend the learning community and also have a group of people that I can share ideas with, we can have conversations, and that informs our your work, my work, and together we can learn and really support our congregations. So guest services. So that, I use guest services as an umbrella term for all the things we do, hospitality, welcoming, greeting, um, to make sure first time guests or visitors uh, have a great experience. Uh, someone asked in the group, why do you use the term guest versus visitor? And a lot of people use visitor and guest interchangeably. From all the church growth and hospitality literature, generally the practice is you want to tell people uh, when you're communicating in orders of service, announcements, and during worship services, you wanna talk about them as guests. Visitors has a little connotation like they're coming, but they're leaving. So guest is a little more standard. I was raised UU and I'm used to just saying visitor, but I'm trying to use the term guest more often. Um, I do like distinguishing a little bit language-wise between visitors, people who are just coming on their own, something happened and they're, they've decided to visit and they have no connection versus, to the congregation versus a guest. When we use the word guest, we often think of someone who uh, has been invited. And we're always inviting people, but there's a difference between someone who is actually coming to the congregation because they know someone there and someone who's just a visitor coming in cold. And then we have a whole group of people who I think of as pre-qualified new members, people who've been studying the congregation online through social media, podcasts, whatever, and they're coming in really hoping to connect and if everything goes well, join. And so we can start talking about uh, different kinds of tracks into the congregation. So if we just go through, like when people come to the congregation, whether they're, they know nothing about the congregation, they've been researching it for a long time, that first visit, is so critical now. I mean, it's always been important that you have a good first visit, but in this age where people have a thousand distractions, there's Netflix, there's sports like crazy on the weekends, Sunday is not a church only time anymore, and there are just like a thousand forms of online entertainment, education, people to connect with. It is so important that that first visit is great because if any little thing happens to make people feel like, they're not wanted, they're not welcomed, this place doesn't care about them, or it doesn't, you know, these people don't take care of their facility, all these little things that it's very easy for them to say, all right, well, this, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. I was gonna give it a try, but I'm out of here. So I think people are really coming into our congregations hopeful, but if, if we drop the ball in any area, um, it, I think people can bounce out very quickly. So first thing, outside your congregation, uh, physical space, physical plant. On Sundays, often I see congregations having greeters just inside the door. Sometimes they have them outside the door. Um, I think it's important to have greeters both outside your main entrances and side doors and parking lots. Um, people coming in new, if, if they have any trouble finding parking, 
they're like, forget it. So just having parking lot volunteers can keep people who could have become new members, help them in the time when they need the greatest help, finding a place to park, figuring out where to go, making sure they can just land at your congregation at all. Uh, from the years that I spent greeting at my home congregation, I repeatedly had an experience where I was outside uh, with, with another greeter. This guy comes up, walks slowly in front of the congregation, and he kind of looks up, he's looking, he makes eye contact, and, and he keeps going. I'm like, oh, what was that about? A few weeks later, the same, same guy does it again. I'm like, wait a second, is that guy thinking of coming in? And so the third time I saw this guy walking by, I said, hey, good morning. Were you, did you want to come in? And he's like, uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah, I, I was. So I go down and talk to this, to this gentleman. Uh, and he had been wanting to go in for weeks, but was so nervous that he just couldn't get to do it. So being outside and being open and not just talking nonstop to a person you're greeting with. I think it's great to always have people doing greeting in teams to people. That way we can take an experienced greeter and someone newer and have them get to know other people. It's a great starter uh, opportunity. And you know, then you have two people who can answer questions and be efficient. Now you don't wanna have two people outside and be gabbing with each other nonstop and ignoring the people coming in. You wanna to talk to each other when no one's there if you're greeting in teams. Um, but just know that whether being open outside can make more people come in. Like we, I don't think we realize how anxious it is for people to come into a congregation um, for the first time. Now, I do a lot of guest preaching and I cannot tell you how many congregations I go to where there's like 12 doors to their complex and it's not clear which way to go. Um, you know, so I might be early, but uh, a lot of people going to, when I'm going, a lot of people go to congregations early if they're a first timer. And so say 45 minutes before the service starts, a newcomer comes and they can't tell which door to get in. You've got to get your signage clear and also get greeters outside earlier. Um, sometimes people tell me, Peter, oh, our greeters don't want to be out there for so long. Well, get more greeters, have a great experience with your greeters, have a shift for before service, say, you know, the 45 minutes before until right when people are, you know, like 15 minutes before, you just rotate. You don't have to have someone be there for, two hours, but know that if you don't have people outside that you are missing people. Um, another thing that um, I, I've seen w with greeting is, uh, I have a colleague, Jim Griffith, who does lots of church plant consulting with Christian denominations. And he shared something with me once saying that um, he finds that if you have just men outside, say two men or one man, um, there are people coming to congregations after having um, abusive relationships or something going on. And sometimes just having a man standing outside of the congregation is intimidating. And, and I learned, heard that from him. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then I started paying attention to congregations. And I see a lot of congregations where there'll be one guy standing outside wearing sunglasses, kind of looking serious, and I'm like, wow, he looks more like a bouncer than uh, a greeter. And so I think it's nice if we can, with our greeters, make sure that we have uh, different people outside. And if you can, male, female teams, different combinations, and just be mindful that people sometimes are coming to us uh, in a really um, hurting place. Um, as we go through uh, this chat, you know, I want you to keep in mind things that your congregation does that you're great at. If you have something around hospitality and greeting, that's amazing. Like, as we continue discussion uh, throughout this week and beyond, I love it if there's something that you do that's amazing. Like, oh, we have this great practice. Um, say, like my home congregation, Providence, they do this newcomer cafe, you know, maybe you could sh share that. So if you have something that's fabulous, I just wanted to you um, know that I'd love for you to share in this group, uh, just a, a post on its own, sharing the great thing you do. Uh, now, I mentioned greeters outside. Uh, 
One question that comes up when I'm doing trainings with um, welcome teams, sometimes I'll do a, a training with welcome teams when I'm guest preaching before the service. Uh, there's a question like, all right, should our minister be outside versus lay people, other volunteers? I think you know, some ministers just love, love, love to be outside greeting everyone. And I think that is great for uh, building relationships with the existing members and friends. I don't think it's necessarily the best for if someone is going to come up and has a question that you just have the minister outside, out front. Um, if you have your minister right outside the front door greeting people or inside, I think it would be it's great to have a whole nother greet line of greeters. My telephone, I thought I unplugged that. Here, I'm going to get that. Hold on one second. I'm going to unplug it. What was that crazy technology? Dun, 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 dun. We are live, people. I have a phone. We have like six handsets. I thought I got rid of it. There's a bonus one. Anyhow, all right. So if you have ministers outside, just know that when people come up, say you have a new family, um, two parents, three kids, they need to know where RE is. They need to, uh, you know, find bathrooms. Your minister's not able to do that, okay? You need to make sure you have people greeting who can actually answer questions and help people. Um, I always recommend having probably twice as many greeters as most congregations have, um, and I've seen them practice, because if you have people who are greeting, whether it's inside the doors, outside, different positions, um, you know, different doors of the building, uh, if someone comes up and needs help, you also need to have people who can bring them somewhere. I sometimes call them the bringers. So, so I might be a primary greeter at the, your front door, but I might have someone else who's kind of floating around that area. And if someone new comes with a family and they need to know about religious education and various things, I can say, hey, Susan, can you come here? And Susan comes, I introduce them, and then Susan can bring them where they need to go and introduce them to religious educator, whatever the process is. Uh, so, you know, having, having the capacity to connect with people when they show up is really important. Um, if Now, I just want to pause and say, thanks to all of you who've jumped in. If you have questions, I'm going to take a few questions at the end. Um, I'm just going to share a few more things, like five more minutes, and then take question, a couple questions, and also just get some ideas for things we might talk about moving forward in our group. Uh, so give me a thumbs up if you can still hear me, and if you haven't, checked in yet, just say where you're listening from, okay? Uh, all right, I mentioned greeters and pairs. All right, I'm not gonna go over every single thing. Like, I mean, I do some more in-depth trainings. We're just getting people going. Uh, now, when people come into your congregation for the first time, I'm finding in my work that th very often they have done research online, have done a lot of things uh, that Normally, like kind of the education we think, oh, someone's gonna come in, get uh, oriented to the congregation, we're gonna, gonna do newcomer orientations, classes, things, I and mean, we can still do that. But a lot of people are getting that information online and not visiting until they've had all their questions answered. And so I think we can get more people to visit if we support them uh, through online communication, answering all our questions. I talked about that in my, my church social media and membership growth course, which is online. Uh, which I'm updating, so I'm, don't run and register for that. I'm gonna put a, a new updated 2018 version soon. Uh, people are basically pre-qualifying themselves for membership, making sure your congregation is a match for them often before they visit. Yes, some people just walk in, some people come because of friends, but more and more people, especially people who are socially isolated, are doing all their research, people who are digitally oriented, and when they are confident that the congregation is right for them, they show up and they wanna make sure it's a match, the people are gonna like them or like them, they're welcome there, everything is as they thought it was. And those people need to get connected quickly. So um, I like to tell congregations, you should plan for and have a system where if someone comes in the door and are, is a newcomer uh, and clearly is interested in getting involved, uh, you need to be able to connect them to some kind of a group within three visits. That's what I say, three visits. Maybe if they have to wait a month 
if they know it's coming, that might work. But from the time people come in, to be able to say, I, all right, if you're new, here's how you connect with a group. Here's how you meet other people. Here's how you can really start getting integrated into the life of this congregation. Very often, I see people uh, go into congregations and it's clear. And people say, oh, welcome, welcome. And they ask them to stand up or they give them a mug or visitor or guest tag. And one, once they um, are identified as you know, being new, and maybe if, if you have people stand up in your services and they're applauding, uh, welcome, welcome. There isn't a good system for making sure those people go from there into a congregation. I mean, into some kind of group experience, a connecting experience. I think there's a lot we can do to create specific opportunities. Um, we can talk more about what are the kind of connecting opportunities you use. Uh, I've been working with small group ministry since we launched the Small Group Ministry Network. I co-founded the Small Group Ministry Network in 2001 as a website and then 2004 as an organization. So for me, small group ministry is the ultimate growth engine if we do it right and connect people. Um, so what what I want to do is just wind down there. I've got, I got like a hundred more points, but um, I just want to keep it short this first time. So um, if if you do something amazing in your congregation, um, one, just share right now in a, send, a, a, a comment, what's something that you do really well that you're proud of that's working? Um, and then I can invite, I'm gonna look at a computer screen over here. That I'm recording, so just so you guys know, I'm recording right now, live streaming from my smartphone there, and then I've got um, my desktop right here. And I wanna try and pull up uh, your comments here. All right, comments, comments, four comments. Um, all right, so if you, things you do well, questions, feel free to share those now. Um, here's how I'd love for this group to work. Um, I'm always working with congregations, coaching, training, speaking, um, and always looking at ways to help support our congregations. Um, so this is kind of like a learning community for you and for me. So I want to be sharing, not like being like, hey, promoting my trainings. I mean, I will tell you when I have new trainings online that you can enroll in like with a registration fee but as i'm learning i want to just share what i'm thinking about and we can explore and discuss together and through our exploration we can be learning together and then over time you know i'll keep putting out new trainings um, but i want this to be just an ongoing like as soon as i have an idea or as soon as you have an idea or a challenge or a question we can we can share um, so we have one idea, have congregants record personal welcome messages to post on the website. So I think that we could do so much more with video in our congregations. Uh, imagine this today, if you're going to make any important life decision, new car, go somewhere, purchase this, visit a restaurant. Well, visiting a restaurant is not necessarily a uh, big life decision. Um, but you know, like you're gonna do something, people with smartphones, which is the majority of adults in the United States today, if you're gonna do something, people are, love researching it and knowing that they're making a smart decision. And so that's starting to apply to our congregation. Uh, am I, which congregation am I gonna go to? Or if I think you might be a great congregation, people are going and wanting to verify that, yeah, that's the right one. And to help people know that, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fit in here. This is the kind of place for me. To have videos of staff explaining who they are and members and friends sharing why the congregation is important to them is a great idea. I'm married to a UU minister, uh, Reverend Amy Friedman. Hi, Amy. Um, she's not on the live stream because she's doing something else. Um, well, we're here. It's called Tag Team. Uh, so one thing I found being married to a minister is... There are so many people who had come into our congregation who had just come after they had met Amy at a wedding, a funeral, or at some public event out in the world, say a, a protest or some public event. And so I came to realize that people had these sense that like, well, I'm kind of interested in this church. I heard about it, but what's the... What about the weird churchy clergy people? Like, is is the minister a human being? Uh, and so not knowing, say if, if you're not really keyed in, clued into organized religion, or say you left one kind of 
religious community and you've been anti-religion, but now you're realizing Unitarian Universalism could be great. But you're like, what's, what's their minister like? That's something that can keep people from visiting your congregation. So to share actually videos of your minister, of your leaders, of your religious education teachers, uh, you know, all those things can be huge in helping people decide, yeah, I'm gonna visit. So um, now on a wrap up, it's 1120 where I am. Um, the, uh, and, and one thing, we can do a lot with smartphones. So you do not need, uh, if you can afford it or wanna do it, you could hire a video production crew, but you can with an iPhone or I mean, a smartphone get, um, get a tripod for $25, a little smartphone clip, that's what I'm using right now, to go on top of it for like $10, $15. And so then you can set up a tripod with your smartphone in your congregation some, somewhere and just nice and steady record testimonials, record your minister welcoming people, record your religious educator explaining what your different curricula, curricula are in um, various classes. So say, oh, if you have children in this age range, we're working with this curricula and that curricula, which goes into this. And this is what our whole lives are. And just a video orienting people to that religious education um, can be really helpful. Uh, we've got a question. Do you think age slash generation is a factor in any of this? I've been associated with two U congregations who are growing in numbers with older people. I think, um, what you know, if I also invite all of you Answer each other's comments. How do you think generational factors play in? I think, personally, uh, there's, a, there's a lot. I mean, I've been looking a lot at how technology is impacting the way people connect. And so people are liking to get oriented online first. Um, I think the, uh, oh, I know what I want to tell you. This, so this generational question, uh, which I think we'll get back to maybe another time in more detail. Um, reminds me of something I want to tell you. So besides launching this new group, I'm going to launch a new UU podcast focused on congregational life, leadership, and just other issues related to leading and growing congregations. And so that generational question made me think, oh, you know what I'd like to do is I can tell you some of my thoughts, but even more, I want to get some people like, um, leaders in our national youth movement and others who have real expertise in those generational issues. Um, and I have some people in mind to be in the podcast. So that podcast will be free podcast you can subscribe to um, on any smartphone. So more on that later this month when I launch it. Um, so, all right, I'm gonna wrap up now because uh, I don't wanna go too long. This is gonna be available as a recording. So if people missed it, they can come back. Uh, here is your mission. I'm going to give you a mission. Two things. First, if there is something great that your congregation does, something that's really working, something that you're like, oh, this is awesome. What we do in terms of connecting people to newcomers, first time guests, I'll say guests, to the congregation, making sure that they have a great experience and come back a second time, share that over the next three days in this group, okay? So um, by Friday, um, get all those in there. And yeah, podcast. Someone says, oh my God, podcast. Finally. Uh, but so share what you do. That's awesome. And it could be, if you don't have much time, if you want to just share two sentences, that's fine. If you can do a paragraph, great. If you want to record a little video explaining what it is and post that video to the group, amazing. If you have a photo, say you do some amazing thing with a welcome table, share your welcome table photo. When things kick up, um, when you go to church next, share those. And then second thing is, if you don't have something that you're like ready to share in terms of show and tell for our group, uh, feel free to send me questions, things that you'd love to have us explore in this group, uh, people who you think would be awesome guests for podcast, and also if there are people uh, who you think would appreciate this group, invite them to the group. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm gonna try and make it a practice to do one live session like this a week just to get conversation going and prompt you for sharing things. So this time, over the next few days, share things uh, related to guest services and making sure guests have a great first experience. And just every week, we'll keep learning together. And I welcome your feedback uh, and thank you for being here. All right, any questions before I go? I think that's it. I think I'm done. 
And I gotta turn my air conditioner back on because I'm dying. All right, thank you for being in the new group. It is awesome. And I can't believe we launched with like almost 500 people in the group uh, within the first week. So thank you and I'll see you soon. All right.